just got back from an archaeological dig with these ancient artifacts. Laser discs. What say we put on the greatest superhero movie of all time? Sure. Wait a minute. This isn't Superman 2. Yeah, the discs all had the wrong movies inside. Man, everyone was crazy about Batman that summer of 1989. This movie was on every toy shelf, t-shirt, people were even shaving it into their head. Yeah, well they must have been real disappointed when they finally saw the movie and realized Batman is the worst superhero of all time. Hey! Twenty years ago, people found Tim Burton's Batman as dark and adult-themed as Christopher Nolan's franchise. Don't mean that. I'm talking about what a completely ineffectual, bumbling, scaredy-cat Batman is. Th th this whole movie is like an elongated Roadrunner cartoon. Batman is the coyote, moronically chasing after the Roadrunner, the Joker, despite having no idea what to do if he actually caught him. Now the first time Batman encounters the Joker, he's the only weirdo dressed up in a costume. The Joker is still plain old suave Jack Napier. You look fine. I didn't ask. Batman grabs Jack during his attempt to rob the chemical plant. Probably so he can tell him. I'm Batman. Let him go! But Batman has to let him go to save Commissioner Gordon from that bigot who kicked Tom Hanks out of the library in Philadelphia. Wouldn't you be more comfortable in a research room? No. Would it make you more comfortable? Jack takes a shot that backfires, and like he's in a Three Stooges movie, stumbles over the railing. <laughs> Even though this is a dangerous, desperate man, who seconds ago just murdered a cop, Batman tries to save him. Maybe he figures Jack will go on trial, and justice will prevail, and his lengthy jail sentence will serve as an example to other criminals. Hey, maybe he'll even turn snitch and help bring down crime boss Carl Grissom. Whoops. Well, you can't win them all. The next time Batman encounters public enemy number one, it's on the steps of the courthouse, when he kills an associate, and then his goons open fire. It's a massacre. There's dead cops, dead civilians. This is the perfect moment for Batman to bust out some of that deadly kung fu shit he's supposed to have been studying. But he chokes! He freezes up and watches like a slack-jawed yokel while the Joker gracefully hops into a slow-moving getaway car and cruises off. Okay, maybe this is understandable. A Batman staring at the Joker for the first time, recognizing him as the man he dropped into the vat of chemicals last week. He probably figured him for dead. It must be traumatic seeing him alive, transformed into the clown prince of crime. Maybe Batman is busy thinking, Oh my god, what have I done? But this is where the excuses run out. Batman now knows for a fact the Joker is a deranged homicidal maniac who thinks nothing of taking the lives of the innocent. Like when he gasses a whole art museum, slaying dozens of diners enjoying culture or maybe celebrating a wedding anniversary. Sure, it's mostly snooty rich people who get snuffed. Probably all criminal bankers and unscrupulous lawyers. But what about the wait staff? Some poor guy working for tips? Probably with a wife and kids at home. Why does he have to die? Just because he takes a hilarious fall down the stairs, like the ten coconuts cream pie guy, doesn't make his death any less tragic. The Joker's death toll is already higher than Son of Sam and Columbine combined. Batman should swoop down, kill the Joker, and put an end to this reign of murder and sorrow once and for all. <laughs> But instead, he just zip lines away. WTF? He was right there. Batman had the Joker red handed in the middle of his latest murder scene, and he just runs away. If ever there was a moment to kill the Joker, here it was. He could have reached out and snapped his neck, or given him the five fingers of death to the heart. Or, since it was in his hand anyway, he could have rotated that bat device 90 degrees and sent that hook shooting right through the Joker's skull. But no. Instead, he cops a cheap feel off Kim Basinger and goes scrambling for the Batmobile like he's worried he's got to put another dime in the meter. Okay, 
So Batman supposedly has this code of not killing people. Wanton destruction of private property and putting citizens at risk by goading nothing to lose criminals into high-speed car chases? That's okay. But he draws the line at execution without a fair trial. Sounds noble. Until you think about all the people who are gonna die because he's too wimpy to get the job done and get a little blood on his hands. Since letting the Joker go free, he's pumped his chemical poison into Gotham's supply of hygiene products, killing who knows how many. All deaths Batman could have prevented if he'd just done something about the Joker. Is he aghast at what he's let happen? Is he going to reevaluate his shaky moral code? Alfred, let's go shopping. Yes, sir. No, he goes shopping. He'd rather put his energy into cracking the code of the poison. Talk about treating the symptom and not the cause. You'd think he'd be all, Man, the next time I see that Joker turkey, I'm putting one right between his Harlequin eyes. You might even think he'd be out, actively looking for the Joker. He can't be that hard to find. We know he's got a nice office. We know he concocts his mischief at that chemical plant. But no. The next time Batman runs into the Joker, it's random it? happenstance. They both have a crush on the same girl and meet up at her apartment. Take thy beak out of my heart. And how does the Cape Crusader take charge of this situation? As soon as nobody's looking, he runs the fuck away. Is anybody seeing a pattern here? And this time, he doesn't even take Kim Basinger with him. He just hightails it out of there, never giving a thought as to whether the Joker might spray her face with acid, like he's already tried before. Or maybe his goons will beat the shit out of her and take turns spit-roasting her. Batman runs off God knows where to do God knows what. Alfred, let's go shopping. Yes, sir. Now here's the part of the movie that makes me nuts. Batman sends the Batmobile into the chemical plant to blow it sky high. Finally! He's being a little proactive. But there are henchmen all over when the bat bomb drops. Did he finally reconsider his code of not killing people? Coming to the understanding you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs? If he did, it was a short-lived change of policy. Cause here he is seconds later. Notice he was waiting outside, never for a second putting himself in any danger. The Joker comes hanging out of a helicopter, a veritable spotlight target on him. Batman could activate the Batmobile machine gun or shoot a bat missile at the Joker to shoot him right out of the sky. But no, he stands there like he's just wet his suit and watches the Joker fly away. Fly away to his biggest murder spree ever, shooting poison gas on a crowd of thousands. Can you imagine how many people died this time? No, don't. It's too depressing. Okay, so Batman gets into his dopey airplane shoots onto a city street as strategically as the Kent State National Guard, crashes, and chases the Joker to the top of a church tower for a lame fist fight. I'm not sure why Batman fired that tether at the Joker. He couldn't have thought it would lead to his death. We've seen no evidence in the last two hours that Batman would ever try to kill the Joker. Maybe he thought the tether would spin the helicopter blades and make it fly off to safety even faster. It's probably only dumb luck it snares onto a gargoyle and rips the Joker off the ladder to his demise. Why did it take so long to kill the Joker? An action Batman could have taken countless times before and saved countless lives. So the Joker is finally defeated. No real thanks to Batman. Yet he has the nerve to stand there at the end of the movie, overlooking the city, as though in any universe he is its defender or savior. I mean, that newspaper reporter was more willing to put his life on the line. And what was his reward? What about us? I thought champagne would be in order, man. Chump is the bum of the world. So I guess the Joker's the fat man. What do you mean? It's a hypothetical scenario given to students studying ethics. You're on a train that's barreling down the tracks, about to run over a huge group of people. You can't stop the train, 
but you can switch to an adjacent set of tracks. However, there is a fat man on those tracks, who you would run over and kill. It's about the question, is it ethical for an innocent person to die in order to save others? But the Joker's not innocent. He's killing hundreds of people. Yeah. Guess Batman's just a big pussy.